I work at the Tomsk nuclear research reactor. I work as an engineer in the laboratory of silicon doping. And today I'm going to tell you about nuclear transmutation or irradiation of materials. To begin with, let's take a look at what radiation is. Because by saying the word radiation, light or radio waves might be understood. But in this topic, we're going to concentrate only on ionizing radiation, uh, which means that when it penetrates through matter, it ionizes the substance and produces electri electrically charged particles or ions. And by doing so, it can affect the structure of material or living tissues. Uh, here on the slide, you could see some of the characterization of types of radiation. For example, there is electromagnetic radiation, which is X-rays and gamma rays, and particulate radiations, which in turn are different particles like alpha particles, neutrons, and beta particles, for example. Also, radiation might be characterized as directly ionizing radiation that directly ionizes the substance, and indirectly ionizing radiation. These are neutrons and gamma rays. It means that it produces the particles that afterwards directly ionize the substance. All right, here on the slide you could see the information that you might know from school. It's the different types of radiation penetration ability. Uh, you're safe enough if you shield yourself with a piece of paper against alpha particles. You need something heavier as aluminum plates against beta particles and much heavier materials like lead against beta uh, against X-rays and gamma rays. And for neutrons, you will need more complicated materials like concrete or lead combined, depending on the energies of neutron. All right, let's go to the first application of uh, radiation transmutation. And this is the most beautiful application. It's the gemstone colorization. Usually topaz or diamonds are used. Uh, when they are irradiated with gamma rays or with neutrons combined, they change their color due to the defects in their crystal structure. And the color you will obtain will depend on their basic structure, on the type of radiation, and on the time of irradiation. Also, it depends on the following procedures like annealing, for example. Uh, after irradiation, depending on the time, uh, there there will be storage time from several weeks to several months. Well, it depends on how hard the radiation was. Okay, the next application is silicon doping. It is done for the purposes of electronics, in particular power electronics, microelectronics, solar batteries, for example, and overall electronics. So that's a very useful material and a very useful technique. The silicon itself, is a non-conductive material, so it doesn't conduct. But when you irradiate it with a flux of neutrons, uh, part of the silicon is turned into phosphorus. And phosphorus has one free electron, so that allows the current to pass through. And this material now, now turns into the semiconductor, and it could be used for the reasons of electronics. Um, instead of silicon, different materials could be used, such as uh, gallium, germanium, or indium, depending on your, well, uh, money, depending on your purposes, and so on. And the next broad application is food irradiation. So, food irradiation is when the food is irradiated with ionizing radiation, and it changes its structure. It is done for reasons to control the foodborne pathogens, reduce microbial load, also insect infestation, and inhibit the germination of root crops. Also, it is done to extend the shell life of the product. So, when the ionizing radiation passes through the food material, it changes its um, living structure and the cells. It has the biological and chemical effect on them. So, the purpose of irradiating foods is either to irradiate the contaminated pathogens to reduce pathogenic microorganisms or to irradiate the living foods itself 
to uh, improve the quality of such a food material. And uh, the biological effect of ionizing radiation is inversely related to the size and complexity of uh, material. All right, let's take a look here. Um, when the food is irradiated, the bad bacteria there are also subjected to radiation and they either die or become much weaker because they are injured. So that means that the following processing will um, definitely kill them. For example, cooking or storage conditions and your food will be much more, well, will be much safer. Okay. Also, it is done for the reasons of uh, sprouting inhibition and ripening. The vegetables and fruits might be subjected to it. So, as you know, such uh, vegetables as potatoes, onion, garlic, uh, they sprout. And if they are subjected to the dose range of about 20 to 150 grays, the sprouting process is either inhibited or completely stops. As you can see it in the picture, the potato, which has been irradiated with one kilo gray, is not sprouted. And uh, the same is for fruits, but it's done for the reasons of delaying ripening process. For example, when you need to deliver fruits uh, far away. Uh, the dose of about 0.1 to 1 kilograms is used for such purposes. Okay, the next very useful case is insect uh, disinfestation. Different insects uh, are located in uh, cereals, grains, uh, flowers, beans of plants and they might cause the loss of the crops and the harvest. So, when different crops are irradiated with a dose of about 0.2 to 1 kilogram, the number of those insects uh, decreases or they completely die out. Um, for example, the dose of 150 grays is enough to save uh, your fruits from fruit flies. Okay, next one is shell life extension, which is really uh, useful in the modern world. Uh, the same dose is applicable to such a case and it kills the um, spoilage bacteria. So it allows your food to be stored on the shelves for a much longer time. Um, for example, the life, the shell life of chicken and pork might be extended up to several weeks and the um, shell life of fish might be prolonged from three or four days up to a few weeks as well, which is a very good result. And the last one is spice radiation. Uh, they are produced from fresh plants and fresh plants will definitely contain uh, different bacteria from spoil, dust or birds droppings. And when they are dried, the number of those bacteria rap will rapidly increase. And when those spices are used as seasonings for processed food, uh, in such manufacture, usually the sterilizing step is absent. So it means that this food will spoil pretty quickly and you might catch a food illness. So when this food is irradiated of around from 5 to 10 kilograms, it's enough to uh, pass, well, to get the satisfactory results in it and uh, your food will be safe enough. And also it doesn't have the negative effect on the chemical um, contain of such a food. And for today that's all. Thank you for your attention.